Hi, I'm going to show you how to make your jobs efficiently on our Bianca HPC cluster. This is part of the intermediate workshop on a Bianca that we teach at UpMax. So let's go through through this page. It's about efficient jobs. We have to practice using the UpMax documentation and the goals you can see the CPU and memory usage of your jobs. You can understand a job stats plot, whatever that is, and you understand how to set up jobs efficiently. Why is that important? Well, according to the UpMax documentation, from an unknown source, if everyone would use our computational resources effectively, there would be no queue. So we are all are waiting for simulations to finish. Uh, would be nice if there would be no queue. Um, but we, we have to wait until they start. Let's take a look at the exercise. We have exercise 1, reading a job stats plot. We're going to go scroll through it first. We have an idea, so we see some plots there. We're probably going to talk about them. And exercise 2, creating a job stats plot. So that's probably that's where we're going to create a plot like that ourselves. Right. So back to so let's go to exercise 1 here, reading a job stats plot. And let's take a look what this is about. So we need to read the UpMax job stats documentation, especially the effective use section. So I'm going to click this um, in a separate tab. I'm going to go there. And here we see a strategy how to effectively use your UpMax resources. So first you have to pick the number of cores to have enough memory. Memory is the biggest problem. If you don't have enough cores for your memory that you need, it will always fail. So you need at, at least that amount of cores to have the amount of memory your application needs. If you have that amount of core, cores reserved, will the runtime, will, the, will, the, will your CPUs limit you going through uh, the job? Like is the simulation mostly waiting for the CPUs to finish and are all CPUs well doing a lot of work or could some more cores be booked too that could help out? So could more cores help out is the question. Well, if they can't help out more anymore, if the CPU is already done, uh, it, it's not at, it doesn't use all the cores all the time, then you can increase the number of cores by one for safety because memory may go up a bit unexpectedly and you've uh, your job is uh, suddenly terminated maybe after nine days. So you can do this, this is optional, but we recommend to increase this number of cores by one. If however there are extra cores, if they would help out, then well, you increase the number of cores so that on average the right amount of CPUs is booked. And the right amount of CPUs is that around 80% of the time um, it's doing everything or 100% of the time it's around 80% of CPUs being used. All right, and these are guidelines and you can do, be, do a bit different, whatever you, you can do this a bit differently. But this is the algorithm. First memory, then CPU, and then sometimes plus one. Um, and these are just guidelines, they're not super hard rules of thumb. Alright, back to the exercises. So I've ran, I've read this section a bit. So this is apparently important. Is there something more? Uh, there are some questions here. I don't have to, well, maybe need a worked out example. Alright, so there's a worked out example here. Uh, but I'm going to do this in the exercise anyway, so I'm not going to... Uh, there's another one here. Let's go back to the X. I've read this well enough. All right, next step. See job stats plot one below and answer these questions. How much course, course should this user book and why? All right, so here we have uh, a plot. You can make this yourself by job stats. We'll be doing that later. And it already says some red words here, half overbooked, severely overbooked course. Uh, so there's a lot of red words. So let's take a look. So at the right, we see the amount of CPUs being booked and it's U. So we have 16 cores being booked because one CPU is 100%. And we see that exactly one core is used all the time. So 15 cores are doing exactly nothing. Um, memory uses this black line. This is close to 0%. So this is a completely 
overbooked job as the errors already say, this user should probably book one core or maybe two just to be sure. Um, that is the answer. Uh, yeah, one core if you want to make sure two, but one is probably enough. All right, we have another plot. If the same questions, sure, sure, sure. Um, did the job finish successfully? That's new. So just taking a look already here, it says out of memory. So that's a hint. No, it it terminated. It crashed because it ran out of memories. Um, how much cores should this user have booked and why? So let's take a look at this plot. So you see that memory, this black line goes up and up and up. It goes over that. These red dots means it's cheating a bit by using our hard disk space to get this memory anyways. Uh, it's very slow. Uh, you want to avoid that situation. And then after a while it, it crashes. Probably it wants to go up here. Uh, across this dotted line which is the what you have what you have reserved. Um, it, it goes over that. So how much cores should this user have used? I have no idea. Uh, we know that it goes up, 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 up and here it crashes. Like if this would be at the close to the end of the run then uh, so the, the user has now booked 14 cores and it crashes at around this time at around 700 minutes. Um, if this would be the end of the close to the end of the run, then I would say, well, try 15, 16 cores or whatever. Uh, but maybe this was only at the start of the run. Maybe the user needs to book 28. So in this case, we don't know. Um, and and that is the answer. Like we don't know. Uh, one strategy is to try to duplicate to double the amount of cores you've used now. And then if you over overbook again, then you go down again. So you'd fine tune uh, after the job has ran. You need to find out how much course this job actually needed. Uh, and then you can zoom in on the exact optimal value. And um, the CPU usage in this job has been very low. So it's a very memory intensive job. Uh, the CPU has, has not been the problem at all. So now we have job stats plot 3. This is the last one. How much cores should this user book and why? So let's take a look at this seemingly innocent plot. All right? We see that uh, for the duration of time there are 20, 20 cores being used to its fullest. Memory is very low, um, below 100%. So, so that's not a problem. We have enough cores for the memory. And here we see that we have 20 cores working full time. The question is, has this user overbooked and or underbooked? And we don't know. It looks very clean, but maybe uh, the process could have gone faster if the user would have used 40 cores, for example, like the double amount. We don't know. It could also be that uh, the software is written uh, to use 20 cores, so that's optimal for the software, and that the user uses that, and having 21 cores is completely useless. We don't know. So the answer is, um, could the u how much course should the user book? We don't know. We do know for sure that the computational resources are used very efficiently. So the user could also say, well, I leave it like this. Because we also know that if you book more course, more computational power will go to overhead. Because if you have more cores, then these need to communicate with each other and you will lose efficiency there. Um, it can be a strategy of the user to book it like this, because to have like reasonably fast finishing of the simulation, uh, but not spending too much processing power on overhead. Uh, so also here, we don't know. Uh, let's see, we have another plot, job stats 4, this, is, this looks uh, interesting, it's completed, it has 3 cores being used, memory goes up to around 1 and a third core. So we know memory is, is the first thing we need to look at, we need at least 2 cores to have a, uh, enough memory, and then we add 1 for security. Um, and then we need to look at the computational use of the cluster of the cores, so how much CPU, the blue lines. And we see that it's a bit unclear because the CPU sometimes does work 100% uh, at all three cores. But it seems these lines are thicker, so it seems that 100% is used more often than 300%. So that means one core on its own is used more often than all three cores at the same time. 
So um, I feel this is not limited by CPU power because of these thick blue lines here. So I would say this is a well set up job. Um, and that's in the answer. Um, well, here we have another job. Let's take a look at this one. So um, has eight cores. So memory is uh, actively in use, so it's less than 100%, but memory re reserved uh, goes to 800%. Um, that apparently is not a problem because it doesn't use all of it. Um, and I don't know what happens here. It didn't crash, we are, that we are sure about that because the job completed. Uh, but maybe maybe it, this, this can give problems. Well, it didn't in this case. Um, computational power used is it uses all eight cores all the time and the end it drops down. Probably rounding off something, we don't know what this is. So I would say this is a good job. This is a well scheduled. We also here we could argue maybe the CPUs are limited here. Maybe having more CPU cores would make the job finish faster. But then again we have an increased overhead um, and less efficient use of your resources. Although the CPUs are working all the time. So you can also say well maybe uh, 8 cores is a good trade off. And also maybe the software uses 8 cores, is written to use 8 cores um, and then uh, the user simply uses that. So we don't know but it seem, this seems like a solid job to me. Alright, exercise 2, we've now seen some of them and we're going to create one. And I'm going to double check if I'm still logged in into Bianca, I am, that's great. So we're going to create a job stats plot ourselves. For that we need a job to plot and we're going to look for it. So for that we need to scan this documentation. With scan it means just scrolling through it. Finish job, info, shows info, this is how to use it, this is how to get the help, show the information about the specific job, how do I find jobs that are finished, hey, hey, hey. how do I find jobs that are finished. Alright, so that's all in there, nice. Back to the question. Find a job that has finished successfully that took longer than one hour. Alright, that is here. Find a job that has finished took longer than one hour. So I copy paste this thing there. I'm going to run it on Bianca. And there we cannot find a job uh, because Bianca, well, it has, um, it doesn't have. Uh, the jobs running, uh, all the clusters are isolated, so we cannot do this. Instead, we need to run this exercise on Rackham. So I'm going to log in to Rackham. Rackham.upmax.uuse. Note I use the dash x. And if you have a Bianca account, you also have a Rackham account, you can log in here. Now I paste this thing, and now I see finished jobs on Rackham. Right, I press Ctrl C to terminate and I found a job, um, this one, that apparently took 1 hour and 13 minutes and I have found it here. This is the job ID that I needed. So with that ID in mind I need now need to use the job stats documentation. All right, job stats. Sure, you have a, a plot how to plot it, or so here to plot it, job stats, dash dash, plot the number, sure. Job stats, plot the number, enter. And now the plot is created. And next step is to show it, to view it. And if you don't know how to do it, use, take a look at the EOG documentation of Upmax. It shows you how to display an image. Just write EOG and the name of the file. And that's what we're going to do if this thing is done. And it is done. So I'm going to do LS to see all my pictures. This is the PNG being created. This is exactly the same number that I have plotted here. As you can see, it. it's the same thing. And now I'm going to copy paste this thing there. EOG, oh, let's use lowercase, EOG, there. And then we see um, the job sets of this job, it's not ours, uh, but at least we have we, we are able to display any job set. 
Well, for completion, I'm just gonna we're gonna take a look at this one. So we see that this job, uh, memory-wise, has enough cores. And uh, we see it uses six of them, and it uses the all six all the time. So this is maybe uh, the amount of cores can be increased. But again, there's the overhead of adding cores because the the cores need to communicate. Um, so this is a very fine job. Yeah. Um, so maybe um, maybe we were lucky because we know that going back to the exercise um, we've just done all the exercises this job was well set up but let's go back to the beginning of the start uh, let's go to the start if everyone would use our computational resources effectively there would be no queue so we have just seen a job that was very efficient um, but probably we have been unlucky because apparently there are a lot of jobs that use their resources ineffectively um, we'll have to find out with more information with that I round off this session of efficient jobs we have used up max documentation a bit I went through it a bit quickly of course it's a YouTube video um, you'll have more time to read this we have seen the CPU and memory usage of jobs we have read some job stats plot um, and we have created it one and we understand how to set it up efficiently now. With that, I wish you a very good day. Bye!